I'm getting tired of going up and down that ladder and thinking I need some stairs. The stair building's a bit of a mystery, so I've been studying up on it. I want to share some of the information I found with you in case you're thinking about building some stairs. Now planning your stairs to fit the existing job site can be quite a challenge. As you can see here, if I was to come out that door and go to our right there, I've got a little pathway that goes into that lower door uh, that kind of constrains me, so I can't really go to the right. And same thing to the left. I've got a little fence that goes to the left there, and so it's looking like I'm going to have to come out to the front. One of the problems I have with that is my driveway is not too far away, uh, probably about 13 feet, so I can't just come a straight run down from that door. So it looks like I'm going to have to do a switchback stair, which means a landing. That seems like it might complicate things a bit, but a landing should just be treated like another step. I think I'll try and draw this up on some graph paper just to save me some time out here in the work site. In my studies of stairs, I found out that the standard is a 7 inch rise to a 10 inch run. Run is kind of the part you step on. The rise is what gets you up to the next level. And also a term that's useful is the span. Now that is the distance for each one of your runs all combined together, but does not include the length of the landing. Now although the standard is a 7 inch rise, you can go as low as 4 inches and you can go as great as 8 inches so anything in between there is acceptable. The whole idea of stairs is to get from one level to the next safely and comfortably. So considering your rises they should be standardized from one step to the next or consistent I should say and should not vary any more than 3 eighths of an inch. Now I found that the height from the top of the stairs or the landing at the top to the ground is 108 and a quarter inches. Now what do I do with that? Well, I want to find out how many units of seven will come out of that. Why seven? Well, I go back to the standard basically. And the standard is a seven inch rise. So how many units of seven will come out of 108 and a quarter? Well, I do a little math there, and it turns out that it's 15.46. So, you can't really have 0.46 of a stair, but it's telling me that somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 steps is how many I'll need. Well, I'm going to take 15 now and divide that, or divide 108 and a quarter by 15 steps, and it turns out to be about seven and a quarter rises. So that's fine. That's within code. But 15 is an odd number. And I'm going to do switchback stairs. So I want to try what would happen if I had 16 steps. So I take 108 and a quarter and divide it by 16. That gives me a rise of six and almost three quarters inch. Well, a little greater than three quarters inch, but that's so close, I can just round it down to six and three quarters, which is what I'm gonna do for my rise. So, six and three quarter inch rise, and I wanna use two by sixes for my treads. And if you put a couple of two by sixes together, with a little gap in between, you'll end up with 11 and a quarter inch for your run. Those are important measurements because they kind of dictate the overall span of the stairs and of course the height. Now drawing your plans out on some graph paper can be tremendously helpful. It helps you see the length of your landings so I'm going to need a little 40 inch landing at the bottom to compensate for a 40 inch landing that I'm going to have up at the top. So that my stairs start and stop kind of on the same horizontal or vertical plane. Now also, just having these 
numbers laid out for you, the rise and the run can tell you just how far you need to set your mid landing away from your lower landing. In this case, I've just taken all of the different tread links and added them together and seven steps will give me a distance of 78 and three quarter inches from the lower landing to the beginning of the mid landing. Now another important number that can be derived from your rise number of six and three quarters in my case is the height of the mid level landing. All you got to do is take the number of total rises that will get you up to the landing. In this case it looks like it's going to be a total of eight and if you multiply let's see uh, eight times 6.75 you'll see that that is 54 inches. So now I know exactly how high my mid-level landing has to be. Now here's a bird's eye view of the plan of the steps from the top. Uh, stairs should be a minimum of 36 inches wide so that if two people meet, one coming up and one going down, they should be able to get past each other easily. Also, if you have a landing, a landing should be no less than 36 inches by 36 inches. But in my case, if it's a switchback, you want to have some extra room. So it should be at least a foot wider than the stairs that are coming onto it and going off of it. So with six foot being in the stairs, then I need at least seven foot width on my landing. So that's why I've decided to make it 84 inches wide and it's got to be at least 36 in depth there so I've got it being 40 and that's really to help just kind of match up with my landing at the top which I've got at 40 inches and also at the bottom which I'm going to use pavers for a landing down at the bottom that's going to be a 40 inch as well so it helps just kind of make these things consistent uh, also, you can see that the number of steps that go up to the landing is equal to the number of steps that come off the landing. Now some general numbers that I've been able to derive from uh, just having the rise and run measurement is uh, the span of these steps that go up to the landing and that come from the landing up to the second floor. And of course I can add on to my mid landing at 40 inches and my lower landing that's going to be 40 inches so that gives me kind of an overall known now span of all the steps and the landings combined. In this case it's going to be 158 and 3 quarters inches. So that really helps me determine where my landings need to be. Uh, which in turn helps me set where my footers need to be for the post or the landing. Well, I think our plan has uh, been revised enough and I think it, it's looking pretty good now so it's time to get to the work site and get some work done.